before we start today's video, a bit of a shout out to Alan Fritz. Um, Alan runs the uh, the GM's alcove and has uh, on that uh, uh, YouTube channel some excellent videos um, explaining all the uh, the nitty gritty about General de Arme. And uh, if you want to see a game uh, played through phase by phase in in great detail, I recommend you go and check out the videos um, that Alan has um, uploaded to YouTube. And, and I'll put a link in the description below for you to do that. Welcome to Check Your Leader TV. And today what we have for you is a, um, uh, a bit of an overview of a game of General D'Arme um, that Rowan and I played a couple of days ago. Um, the game is just a brief overview. I haven't gone into too much detail. I'm, for example, I'm not going to show it the dice rolling for every exchange of musketry or close combat. Um, but um, it will give you a bit of a, a taste of what um, General Dame is all about. So the scenario we played was uh, Shalwa, the Battle of Gili uh, from the 1815 handbook. Um, the mission, uh, to win, the following conditions uh, need to apply for the French. The French player must demoralise or inflict uh, a savoir-faire a command roll result on two Prussian brigades by the end of the game, uh, ultimately inflict three retire command rolls across the entire Prussian command by the end of the game. The Prussians must avoid the French victory conditions to win. Um, and the game uh, ends after 10 turns, but for each Prussian uh, savoir-faire or retire command result um, will extend the game by one additional turn. Uh, so let's have a look at the French forces involved. So the French field uh, four brigades all up. Uh, their commander is Napoleon, who is rated as incomparable, and um, he has five ADCs. Uh, the brigades are uh, for the infantry brigades. Um, Le Foll's uh, infantry brigade consists of um, some pretty good light infantry, so I deployed them in the centre uh, with a view of uh, trying to take uh, the bridge and the village. Corson's Brigade, which is the smaller of the three infantry brigades, I've put that on the right. The idea being that um, at least they might tie down or distract some um, Prussian troops uh, on the left. And uh, Bethazane's uh, Brigade, uh, I put that on my left, and they would be tasked with uh, securing the ford and uh, crossing the stream. Now let's look at the all-important deployment of the French artillery. What shall we do with them? Well, I decided to uh, take um, the batteries of our foot artillery and mass them into uh, one uh, grand battery, if you will, um, to maximise uh, the firepower uh, of those French guns. Um, and I would use them predominantly to support the troops crossing the stream. And the final brigade worth discussing, of course, uh, obviously, is the French um, Divisional Cavalry. This consists of two Hussar regiments. The first Hussars, they'll be classed as Grenadiers. So they fight as veterans until they're uh, no longer fresh, then they'll just revert to line status. And uh, they're supposed to be the fourth Hussar historically, but I'm using the fifth Hussar today because I don't have the fourth Hussars. Okay. Uh, and then the Hussars, the, the Cavalry uh, Brigade has attached... Um, a horse artillery battery, which is always uh, nice to have. And the final cog in the French war machine is the Empress Dragoons. Uh, these are an independent brigade under the command of uh, the Tort. Uh, there he is there. Um, and these guys, uh, their function will be to support uh, the infantry uh, assaulting across the stream. So... Um, that's the uh, the French troops. Um, let's have a look at the Prussian troops and then the, the plan. So a final view from um, the French side of the stream, looking towards the Prussian positions. Uh, you can see all the skirmishes are laid out and um, you can see that the uh, brigades are ready to advance. And uh, here's a view from the Prussian side of the, the stream. And the Prussian forces for the battle uh, consist of the 1st Brigade of the 1st Corps. Uh, a Prussian Brigade is the size of uh, other countries' um, divisions. So it has uh, three infantry regiments and a nine-pounder foot battery. Um, let's have a look at them uh, individually now. 
So the first uh, brigade that's deployed is the 6th Infantry Regiment. Um, as you'll see here, they've deployed their first, uh, the Fusilier Battalion in skirmish order right up to the stream. Um, the 1st Battalion is in line, just supporting the, uh, the skirmish screen. The 2nd Battalion is on the ridge and they have a 9-pounder foot battery to their immediate left. Um, uh, like I said, the Fusilier Battalion is uh, there uh, deployed in skirmish order and they're rated as Grenadiers, so they're a pretty good battalion. Um, you'll also notice that there's two skirmish bases uh, from the 1st and 2nd Battalions that have been thrown forward with the Fusiliers. So the second brigade that we need to look at is um, Versus Brigade. These guys are a Landwehr regiment, uh, the second Westphalian Landwehr actually. Um, I'm using a collection of Landwehr and reservist units to portray this brigade. So historically they're not painted, you know, they're not exactly the right ones, but hey, they'll do for today. So um, yeah, three, three large battalions of recruits. Uh, these three battalions uh, also have in support of them a um, two companies of um, three corps and so that will provide a small skirmishing unit and they also produce uh, two bases of skirmishes. So that's the Landwehr skirmish screen that's thrown well forward uh, in support of the 6th Regiment's skirmish screen. Um, that is worst there. Commanding the Landwehr, and of course, oh, should mention uh, there's Perch. Uh, he's commanding the Prussian division today. Uh, let's have a look at the final um, Prussian infantry brigade now. Okay, so and the next uh, and final infantry brigade that the Prussians have is the 28th Infantry Regiment, three battalions, uh, just like a normal um, Prussian uh, regiment. Two battalions of musketeers, one of fusiliers. The two mu musketeer battalions, one uh, is posted in support of um, the village, which has been garrisoned by the 1st Battalion. And um, yeah, there they are inside um, the village. And then the 3rd Battalion, which is the fusilier battalion, has been called off to uh, skirmish. And they're right up on the uh, edge of the stream as well in skirmish formation. Uh, they also... Uh, will produce two bases of uh, skirmishes from the two musketeer battalions. And so here they are. And then they also have a Jaeger company, uh, two Jaeger companies in support as well. So the Fusiliers are there, the Jaeger company, uh, two, the two Jaeger companies and the two bases of skirmishes from the musketeer battalions. Um, and that is, uh, that's the final uh, Prussian Infantry Battalion, they're uh, tasked with holding the village uh, and the bridge. Um, the Prussian Cavalry um, consists of uh, the 2nd uh, Dragoons, which are from the Prussian uh, Corps Cavalry Reserve. Um, and that is a, uh, a Battle Cavalry uh, Regiment, the 2nd Dragoons. And then they have... Um, a Landwehr Cavalry Regiment as well. Uh, they're recruits. Um, these guys here are just regulars and they have um, a horse artillery battery attached. And there they are struggling to bring their guns into action. Um, uh, the the uh, Prussians are predominantly Perry miniatures um, uh, and uh, these chaps here are all Kalp. Um, I really do like the Kalp miniatures. All right, so that's the Prussian forces. That's how they're deployed for battle. Um, the plan, I suspect, from uh, Rowan is going to be to simply uh, try to hold the village here and also uh, hold the ford, uh, at least delay the French coming across. The French can uh, cross the stream. Uh, infantry can cross it. It just means it's, uh, it's rough ground, so it slows their movement up. Um, the stream cannot be crossed by artillery or cavalry, only at the ford or at the bridge. So these are key terrain, the ford and the bridge. So what we'll do now is um, um, I'll discuss my plan based on uh, what we've seen from the Prussian deployment. So as we can see, the Prussians have got, um, they're holding the village. Um, they've got some skirmishes covering this area here. Oh, I should uh, add, 
these two patches of um, marsh make the terrain there impassable. So um, I can't get infantry through there. I could, however, cross at this end of the stream and then infiltrate through the woods and try to come through that way. Uh, bear in mind, however, um, the clock is ticking. I've only got 10 moves um, in which to uh, drive off um, two Prussian brigades. Okay, so how am I going to do so, it? Um, let's use this little map and um, as we can see, we've got my... Um, my brigades are indicated by these uh, little tokens here. So um, that's uh, the light infantry brigade, uh, the small infantry brigade, the large infantry brigade, and the French cavalry. Uh, the Prussians, uh, they've got one battalion in here and then one battalion of skirmishes here. Uh, the land veer on the hill and the um, uh, Perch's uh, 6th Regiment's here, and then there's the Prussian Cavalry over here. All right, my plan is as follows. Um, with, um, with the Small Infantry Brigade, I'm just going to demonstrate. Um, with the Centre Brigade, I'm going to do a concerted assault onto the village and um, see if I can't push through there. That's gonna be a tough ask, and it might not happen, but if nothing else, it will tie down that brigade um, there and also keep the Prussians guessing in regards to where they should commit their um, land there. Uh, being that the land there is in the center, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that is Rowan's reserve. Um, now, I do have one brigade that I can put on assault orders automatically, which is really handy. Um, so I'm gonna put this brigade on assault and they're gonna try to force their way across the the, the Ford and uh, exploit into the Prussian um, interior. Uh, hopefully um, they will have um, enough momentum to, to push through. To make their um, assault across the stream uh, more likely to exceed, I'm gonna mass my artillery and I'm gonna pretty much pour all my fire onto these guys here, um, with the option, if if necessary, switching to keep the land bear honest as well. And that's pretty much it. Once I've uh, got through, I'll use the, um, the cavalry to exploit either here or here. I do, I will have the Empress Dragoons and I'm gonna allocate them to support um, my left, my left wing effort. So that's my cunning plan. Um, let's see how it plays out. All right, so we've got the, the table set up for the first game of General Army we've played in about, I think Rowan and I were saying it was a, over one and a half years. Um, so it's gonna be a bit of a relearning for us. Um, we have a French brigade here, and then we have the Empress Dragoons here, Two batteries of artillery, which are going to form a brigade artillery. The skirmishes from the 1st Brigade are out. The skirmishes from the Light Infantry Brigade, um, plus one battalion have been tasked off the skirmish. Then we have Chausson's Brigade, and they're their skirmishes. The Hazars, they're out. The Empress Dragoons, and then there's a horse battery as well. Um, they'll be over here with these guys. Uh, they're just off the table at the moment, following them onto the table. And the Prussians... I've got a battalion from the 28th Regiment in the garrison, and then they have a battalion to the rear, and then the Fusilier Battalion is skirmishing, uh, together with the in organic skirmishes and the Jaegers. The Prussian cavalry is on the hill. Uh, the 28th Regiment's artillery battery is on the hill. Um, and then we have... Um, the 6th Regiment, and these are the, the really good Fusiliers. Their class is Grenadiers. They've been told off the skirmish. Then the skirmish screen, and then two bases of Jaegers. Then there's another, there's the 1st Battalion of the, twin, of the 6th Regiment, and the 2nd Battalion of the 6th Regiment on the hill, and they've got their guns. And then the Landwehr uh, Brigade from the 1st, the Landwehr Regiments, well, the three battalions are on the hill there. They're Westphalian land there. 
and then perch is on the hill over there. All right, we're all good to Just go. Just a brief on the map. Like I said before, there's a ford here, uh, and where you see those skirmishes over yonder, that is, um, that's marsh there, and it's uh, impassable terrain, so we can't go through that. Um, and so that's where we're at. Okay, so we did the first initiative roll. Um, I posted, I had uh, five ADCs, sorry, four ADCs out of five, and I've allocated them, and uh, simply I put them all on command tasks. So that enables me to re-roll um, each of my brigades, and um, they all passed. Um, so I had no negative modifiers to my initiative roll. Rowan, uh, had two ADCs, he put them both on artillery assault over yonder, and he rolled for them and they passed. So he has an artillery assault going on here, and this brigade is uh, fine. The land there, uh, they're fine. Uh, the garrison's fine, but the cavalry went hesitant. So he had a minus one. Uh, I then rolled my initiative rolls, I rolled five. And then Rowan rolled uh, seven. Uh, even with a minus one, though, he still gets the initiative. So the Prussians, for the first turn of the day, they have the initiative. Right, so we did the movement phase. There's no charge declarations. The French have moved up. All the infantry brigades advanced. The skirmish screens came forward. Um, that was it. The Prussians didn't declare any charges, funnily enough, and they haven't moved. Now we're going straight into firing phase. So, yeah. Blaze away. All right, so we did the firing phase. The skirmishes just blazed away here. Um, I don't think I did any. Did I do any skirmisher hits in you at all? Uh, two. Two. All right, so we need to put a marker on, oh, on them to. Yeah. I took a base off. So. Yeah. Oh, you took a base off? Yeah. Ah, oh, no, don't take a base off. All right. Um, um, we just need to put a little marker showing that they've taken two hits. We'll fix that up. Like, so. Like this. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, the skirmish screens met each other. They've blazed away. It really didn't do much. The Prussians suffered two hits. The French suffered four all up across the entire line. So, you know, the French screen is, I think, slightly bigger. So we can take that. The Prussian artillery assault fired. They got one hit, but then the, the because they did an artillery assault, they got two hits uh, extra on this one. So they've now taken three hits. Uh, and the French divisional or uh, brigade artillery, or the divisional artillery, because it's a brigade of artillery, fired and scored one hit on the Prussian uh, first battalion of the sixth regiment. So now we're going to roll for ADCs again. I have none yet. Okay, so again, despite the fact that the land there and the guys in the village went hesitant. The Germans still managed to get the initiative, uh, th given the fact that the French, no one was hesitant. So I have no hesitant brigades, but the Germans had the initiative because Perch had just really switched on. And for some reason, Napoleon is arguing with Van Damme in the rear here, going, Yes, stupid fool, why are you letting the Prussians have the initiative? All right, uh, charge decorations. Any charge decks? Um, I don't have any either. Um, so we go straight into movement. All right, so I'll do some... You, are you not moving? Funnily yeah, enough. They're the no, they're quite happy there. So I shall move. I think I shall... Well, these hoes have to move because they're on assault. Um, uh, what am I going to do with these guys? Anyway. Okay, so uh, turn two now. We're up to turn two on the handy-dandy turn tracker. Um, uh, none of the French have gone hesitant. As I said before, the... Two Prussians went hesitant. Um, firing uh, in the movement phase, uh, these French did a few formation changes and they advanced a bit. Uh, these guys came off the ridge, and Cousson's brigade went off to this way together with the cavalry and the horse artillery. The torch Empress Dragoons came up. Um, then we had some shooting, uh, just dulcetry skirmish fire, but it did result in the French, uh, the Prussians losing one of their skirmish bases. Um, there was one hit inflicted on the guys in the, the, the village of Gilly, and then, but this was the, the, the 
big story. The battery fired here and they inflicted um, three hits and a discipline test plus one from casualty uh, from uh, the casualty dice. So um, yeah, they've now got five hits on, went unformed, but they're still standing their ground. All right, turn three. Okay, so in the movement phase, again, these French advanced. Um, these advanced, in the charge phase, we threw in this veteran light infantry battalion into the town. Um, more French cavalry moved over here. The horse artillery moved up and deployed, but they're not gonna fire because they don't wanna go, you know, uh, inflict a casualty on themselves or whatever. Um, in the firing, uh, the French have dropped the base um, and they took one casualty on the uh, assaulting infantry into the village. They took one casualty going in, but that's not gonna be enough to stop them. And we'll do melee. And then we're gonna do melee uh, because it's a veteran infantry charging a... Uh, Line infantry regiment mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. uh, in a built up area, so this will be interesting. Okay, so um, we fought two rounds. Uh, initially, we how many patients did we inflict on each other initially? It was two, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two and two. Oh yeah. uh, no, it was three and two. Three, and yeah. then we did two. Yeah, so in the first round of fighting, we both inflicted three casualties on each other, and on the second round, we both inflicted two casualties on each other. My veterans retired up the back up the hill, and so they're back here unformed with six casualties. And these brave uh, Prussians of the 28th Regiment are still in there, but they have six casualties and they're unformed as well. Um, so that's that's that. We did all the movement. Uh, we've done all the melee. Now we're going to roll for our ABCs again. And so Roland's got a possible four. So he rolls four. Hopefully five. Well, you might get five. You roll a double six. But you got. Four. four. You got all four of them. And I've got five ADCs and I'm hoping to get five. Yeah. I've got one, two, three, four. So we both have four ADCs at this stage. Let's see how that pans out for us. All right, so it's turn four. We've done the the, the movement. So the, the French continue to push here. Um, we had one... Brigade, the independent Empress Dragoons went hesitant. Um, uh, this brigade sent a battalion in to assault the built up area. Uh, this brigade, uh, Campy, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now. What is his name? His name is uh, Cossin. Yeah. Cossin went, uh, follow me, boys. He's gone glory and he's leading a battalion in as well. So two battalions are attacking the built up area. Uh, these guys just moved up. The cavalry stepped back. Uh, the Prussians, for their movement, they uh, stepped back. They went back three inches. And um, that was basically all the movement done. The firing, some dulcetry skirmish fire. This resulted in a destiny roll. Mm. And the lads were so impressed, they recovered two casualties. Oh, because apparently he's, he's a dreadful-looking fella. We'd better do as we're told. Yes. So... Um, They've gone back in. They recovered a couple of casualties. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And now we're going to go into the BUA and do some fighting. Okay, so we did the melee uh, for the, the village here. Uh, the general with glory, his brigade, um, they went in. They only beat the French by one, so it was a fight on. The Prussians, Rowan fed his second battalion in, which prompted the French to send their second battalion in. That resulted in the initial battalion really getting an absolute drubbing, but the one that came in held its own. So the net result was we only won by one. Mm. So the two battalions that assaulted from this brigade, they had to retire. Um, Rowan then withdrew the really beaten up battalion, which has carrying 13 casualties at the moment. So they've pulled out and he left the, the newer battalion in, in the village. So then the second assault took place, this time was the veteran battalion, the French Light Infantry Battalion. They fought and they won by a grand total of two, which was just enough to drive the those Prussians out. So the French have captured the, the village and driven two, um, managed to drive two uh, Prussian battalions out. It's taken them four battalions to do it, five if you count the original assault. So that sounds about right. Five battalions, virtually the entire brigade, to drive like half a regiment out. So that's about right. Um, and now 
And that ends turn five. So we're halfway through. And now we're going to roll for our ADCs again. Oops, that was actually the end of turn four. Uh, so we've missed a turn. <laughs> I really don't know how we managed to do that. But um, anyway, it doesn't make any real difference. Um, so let's crack All on. All right, so we're now at the end of turn six. Um, basically what's happened in the firing phase, this battery who was on artillery assault fired and finally killed the 1st Battalion of the 6th Regiment, and they fled off. The 2nd Battalion's on the hill, and the 3rd Battalion, which is the Fusilier Battalion, is skirmishing. Um, so as a consequence of a battalion routing, the brigade is now roll, roll, has to roll on the faltering brigade table. Mm. And other than that, um, it's just, yeah, we've pushed up here. The Empress Dragoons are following this battalion across. Um, the Fusiliers that were here, reformed and they're like posturing to try to salt back into the village um yeah so all the hesitant markers come off now mm -hmm. and now we're up to turn seven turn seven uh we rolled for uh adcs i've got five because i rolled a double six even though i dropped one and then rowan's got three all right let's see how that plays out for us All right, so turn seven is concluded, and um, basically what's happened is the Empress Dragoons charged the Prussian 2nd Battalion formed square. Um, there was a bit of a, a kerfuffle. We both took one casualty, uh, and the Empress Dragoons retreated back across the, the stream. Um, these guys over here, when they charged, they, the Prussian um, Fusiliers just evaded back. Then there was a brawl in the town here. We got we we fought two times uh, basically here. Um, the first fusiliers went in. They bounced out and they retired. And then the second battalion went in um, because of casualties. They were now downclassed as recruits, and they the result they got was a retreat, which is eighteen inches back, which took them off the table. So the Prussians have a second brigade that's now well. They have a, a second brigade that has faltered, but it might, like the first one, recover. it might recover. We shall see. And the French have fought very well in the town, Levin. Yes, yes, the, the French, the, yeah, the, the, the melee results, basically, I rolled above average and Roman consistently relo rolled below average. And so, yeah, you can't, that, that's just, that's just the dice gods uh, shitting in your mouth. That's right. All right. Okay, so it's really going down to the wire. So, into turn eight. Yep, it's uh, now the start of the end of turn eight. Um, these guys charged, drove off the fusiliers. So this brigade is down to one um, battalion, mm -hmm. and it's battery. Um, over here, uh, the French. This brigade is uh, been successful getting across, um, and really the rest of it was just great. Uh, great housekeeping we just did some shooting some maneuvering the prussian cavalry is coming around there the french cavalry is coming from the reserve and coming in through the village and that's it now we're going to roll for um ADCs. adcs again okay so end of turn nine we have broken one brigade so that means i've got until turn 11 to break another so I've got two turns left to break one more Prussian brigade. Uh, the cavalry went forward here, um, pretty much shared honours, but at the end of the day, the 5th Hussars were routed and the 1st to retired all the way back to here, even though they've only got uh, four casualties on. And the uh, Landwehr cavalry over there are back there with their uh, seven. seven casualties. There's five on the 2nd um, the Dragoons. And, um, yeah... Lots of skirmishes have fled. Really, the, the Prussian line is just down to one battalion from one brigade and the Landwehr battalion. Um, Which will unleash the Landwehr on you. Yeah, <laughs> unleash the, the Landwehr. <laughs> oh, everyone's quaking in their boots now. All right, two turns to go. So it's end of turn 10 yeah. and... Uh, the Prussians of the 6th Regiment finally broke. 
Um, because my combat rolls were just pretty good, always above average. I I think I got average and that and nothing less than average. Whereas you consistently rolled yeah. below average or average. Yeah. Uh, except good. except for the the Landveer cavalry. The cavalry they good rolled one, yeah. really really well. Yeah. Uh, so it's end of turn ten. The final Prussian brigade broke, uh, just leaving the Landveer and the cavalry. And so yeah, we met the scenario objectives. Mm. And yeah. A very, very good game. Yeah. And really, I, I had to do it in 10 turns, and I, well, 11 because I broke one. Yeah. But I did it in t t 10 turns, but it was really close. And it could easily have gone either way, like easily. And uh, so endeth the, uh, uh, the first game of General's Army that, uh, that we've played in quite some time. Um, observations and lessons learnt. <clears throat> Well, a couple of things um, we picked up. Um, let's go through them here. Okay, so uh, what were the lessons learnt? Well, first one is that um, large units, uh, if they're reservist or recruits, uh, they their, their break level, their disbursement level, is the same as if it was a standard unit of regulars. So they, um, they might be large, but they are just as brittle as a standard unit. Um, and that was important for this game because um, most of the Prussian units were large. The Dragoons were la uh, large, the, um, all the Landwehr units were large, and all the Musketeer units were large. Um, so that was important to know. Uh, the other thing is a destiny roll uh, can't be uh, triggered by a double six being fired by skirmishers. Um, it can only be triggered by uh, close order infantry volleys, hand to hand combat, and artillery fire. I think that's it. Uh, or if um, generals are attached, um, you know, a, uh, to a unit that's leading uh, in melee or being shot at. Shot at. Um, so there was that. Now I'm sure there was a few other things that we did wrong, but considering it was the first game we've played in um, over one and a half years, um, it went pretty smooth. And um, I must say, I really do like General D'Arme uh, for Napoleonic gaming. There's plenty of chrome there that gives it the feeling of a Napoleonic battle. You know, you're, you're moving a skirmish screen, um, you know, recalling your skirmishes, you're, you're forming squares at battalion level. Um, there are opportunity charges there for cavalry if they, if, if required and, and the like. And, and leaders, generals have the opportunity to attach to units and go forward and um, all the, the narrative play and risks to commanders um, that, 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 that is associated with doing things like that. So um, that's General Darmé. Um, like I said, it was just a very brief overview of the game. Um, starting to go on a little bit now. So I'll wrap it up. Um, if you liked what you saw... Uh, please let us know. If you would like to see another General D'Arme game, but with more details, I, you know, the, the dice rolling for the shooting and, and things like that, uh, please uh, throw that in there. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. Uh, the next game that Rowan and I have planned to play is going to be um, the next um, scenario from the 100 Days campaign a handbook, which is Katra Bra, which is a big battle, um, well, bigger than this. Um, Table-wise, it's uh, eight by six. Uh, this was a six and a half by five, uh, yeah, about six and a half by five table. So anyway, that's all for now. Um, like, share, subscribe, and uh, catch you on the, the, the next time we have a battle, guys. Yubakwe.